Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today we're going to find out how to clone the gurus in China, okay? Uh, I spent about a half hour on a Zoom call today with one of my viewers in Canada, and he walked me through this whole process of how to figure out what Li Lu, right, and any other guru investors that you want to look up what they own in China. This is the process. I'm going to lay it out for you guys today. So let's get right into it. Uh, first, let's start at Ticker Terminal. Okay, now Ticker Terminal is fantastic because it allows us to see, you know, the international holdings of gurus, not just their 13F filings, not just their U.S. holdings, uh, but this site you know, it brings in data from other sources beyond 13F filings uh, to show us what these super investors hold. Now, for Li Lu, who runs Himalaya Capital, uh, you can see these are all from 13F filings, except for the first one, okay? BYD Company. That is a Chinese company, and we can see that by clicking through here. Um, and just reading through this, this little write-up, okay? Uh, headquartered in Shenzhen, China, okay? So um, what we're going to do today, we're going to see if there are any other Chinese holdings that Li Lu has that aren't showing in ticker terminal. And I'll give you a hint, there are. So let's dig into those. So the first thing we're going to do we have to go to this site, hkexnews.hk, okay? This is like sec.gov for Chinese uh, investors. At least that's that's my impression. So here's how we're going to find what Li Lu owns in China. We're going to hover over shareholding disclosures. We're going to click on disclosure of interests, Okay. Now, uh, there's a few different options we have. We can look at disclosure of interests since July 3rd, 2017. So this is kind of the newer system. Uh, or we can look at disclosure of interests from you know April 2003 to October 2017. Now, I'm interested in the more recent um, disclosures. So we're going to click on this first one. So there's a few different ways we can search here. Okay. Search by listed corporation. That's if, you know, we want to search BYD and try to see, you know, who are the major shareholders of BYD. Um, but for this one, we want to search by substantial shareholder, okay? Uh, we want to search for Li Lu or Himalaya Capital and see what Chinese companies um, they have a greater than 5% stake in. So we're going to click on the second one. Uh, we're going to type in Himalaya. Now for the date, well, we're going to click, um, let's go back to 2017. Just so we're capturing that entire kind of uh, updated, um, you know, way of, of searching here. So search. Let's see, what's, what are we going to find? What are we going to find? So we've got uh, essentially three results, okay? There's, there's duplicates here, as you can see. Um, two different fund names, basically, for Himalaya. So we've got BYD, okay? We knew that. CRRC Corporation and Postal Savings Bank of China, all right? So let's, let's open these up. We'll do one at a time. Let's look at BYD. So for BYD, we're going to just click on the uh, file name here to, to enter that. So what we, what we can see for BYD, a few things. Date of relevant event on January 28th of this year. Something happened, okay? Uh, and what that was is uh, Li Lu reduced his position from... Eight, just over 8% ownership of the shares outstanding in BYD down to just over 7%, okay? 
Um, what's interesting here is that there must be some kind of mistake because total number of shares immediately before the relevant event, 73,650,600. Total shares immediately after the relevant event, it's the same, guys. So uh, I don't quite understand why the percentage reduced, right, from 8% to 7% but there was no change in the shares outstanding. Um, I mean, maybe there was some dilution event where BYD issued uh, more equity. I, I guess that that could change the percentage without, you know, Lee Lu's uh, number of shares changing at all. Um, but, you know, it, it doesn't kind of specify here. So that's that's a little confusing. Um, so there's that for what that's worth. Now let's go back. Uh, let's take a look at CRRC Corporation. Okay. Uh, we're going to click into the file. So this is back from 2018. Okay. June 26th, 2018. Uh, there was a reduction in show. So this share count did change from 220 million. Uh, 738,000 down to 217 million, 238,000. So here's the big thing here. Uh, Lilu, prior to this event in June of 2018, owned a little over 5% of the shares outstanding. Now, what this event did, this selling off of, you know, three and a half million shares, it dropped. Himalaya down below that 5% threshold. So what happens when you drop down below 5% is you don't have to disclose any share changes anymore, okay? You go dark when you drop down below 5% uh, because the rules in China are, you know, you have to disclose if you own more than 5%. So we don't know if Lilu still owns um, C. RRC Corporation or not. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer. But yeah, that, that's that's what we've got from that one. Now the last one, Postal Savings Bank of China. Let's take a look at that. So there's, there's two entries here. Um, it looks like one was December 2020, and the next one was January 15th of 2021, okay? And you can see the percent of issued voting shares increased uh, after this more recent event from just over 5% to just under 6.5%. So let's take a look at this most recent transaction. So on January 15th, 2021, um, and, you know, that, that's just last month. Uh, Postal Savings Bank of China. So this is pretty cool. So we can see uh, it went from 6% to 6.42%. Okay. There were 84,000 share, 80, 84,000, 83,544,000 shares that Himalaya added uh, to their portfolio. Now, the really cool thing here, you can see this is in Hong Kong dollars. You can see the average price per share, okay, of these, you know, 83 million shares that were acquired on January 15th. You can see the average price per share was $5.35, okay? That is really valuable information to us um, to know kind of what Lilu's average buy price was in this most recent buy for Postal Savings Bank of China. Um, so let's take a look. Average buy price, 535. Let's see what it is now. So if we go into ticker, uh, again, Postal Savings Bank does not show up. I, I just messaged ticker terminal to, to get this added so that everyone can see it in here for Postal Savings Bank. Um, let's do a search for Postal Savings Bank. So here it is. Um, so, you know, dropped a little bit today, 21 cents. Like I said, it was at, 
where was it? 535. Now it's at 585. Okay. So, you know, not too far away. Um, this is in Hong Kong dollars, like I said, and you can see the price chart over the last year. So it really dipped here in September down to, you know, $3 and 16 cents. Uh, I don't know what was it'd be interesting to know kind of what was happening down here. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it went up almost double from there uh, just in a handful of months. And now it's at 585. So what is that in U.S. dollars? So we're at 75 cents uh, per share for Postal Savings Bank of China right now. Um, so that's interesting. So what I did here, I, I put this these two positions into a spreadsheet because I'm a spreadsheet geek. Um, so we've got Postal Savings Bank of China and we've got BYD, okay? Uh, these were the shares owned, you know, as of the last update uh, from this, this site that we've been looking at. And you can see the last activity, um, very recent. Now this is where he added 83 million shares, Postal Savings Bank of China. You can see the last price bought, that was that average buy price. Uh, this current price I just put in earlier today, okay, so so it's dropped, you know, what was it, 20 cents or so since I put this in. Uh, and then, you know, I wanted to calculate, you know, how much total money does, does Himalaya have in these two positions. So we've got this value, which is just the current price um, times the shares owned. This is Hong Kong dollars, okay? So when I converted to US dollars, you've got just under a million, uh, yeah, a million, just under a billion dollars in Postal Savings Bank of China. So, you know, if we look at his other positions, um, let's go back to Li Lu here, Himalaya. If we look at his other positions, you know, this is potentially Himalaya's second largest equity position, Postal Savings Bank of China. Um, Micron has gone up quite a bit, uh, I think, since since the end of the year. So Micron may be higher than that now. Um, but, you know, it's it's a top three position from what we can see here. So that's, that's a pretty high conviction in Postal Savings Bank of China. Uh, the other one, BYD. Um, in U.S. dollars, you're looking at, you know, 2.1 billion. And you can see here, you know, pretty close, 2.25 billion according to ticker terminal. So, uh, and it looks like he, he shaved off a little bit, 2.3%. Now, I'm assuming they got this um, shaving off 2.3% from this site, right? So, uh, I'm a little puzzled why... You know they weren't able to include Postal Savings Bank of China here, but we're going to get that remedied uh, soon, hopefully. Um, so those are the two Chinese positions. It looks like Li Lu owns trimming a little BYD recently and adding more Postal Savings Bank of China. Um, to be honest, guys, I was a little disappointed that I, I didn't find more. Um, from Li Lu through this site. Um, I'd be surprised if he didn't own more than two companies in China. But, uh oh, and what I wanted to show you as well. So the best estimate I have of how much total capital Li Lu is managing is just shy of $14 billion, okay? Now this is a website called advisorinfo.sec.gov. Uh, it's a site I found out about through Phil Town and Danielle Town through their podcast. Um, and, you know, this isn't super updated. It's December 31st, 2019. So it's been over a year since this figure uh, was updated. But, you know, $14 billion, if we assume that's correct, you know, BYD is a pretty significant stake. I mean, it's, you know, what what is that? Um Let's do it real quick. 2.25 divided by 14. Now that's a 16% position in BYD for Himalaya. Um, and then 
you know, maybe a, a 7% position in Postal Savings Bank of China, something like that. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting to, to finally be able to look up what Li Lu owns. Now, like I said, I think there's probably more. Maybe Li Lu is using some, some different fund names uh, to buy in, in different equities in China. I don't know if you guys have any information about that. Please let me know in the comments. Uh, and, you know, if, if you guys follow any uh, super investors, any guru investors who are big in China, you know, take a look at this. Dig up uh, what they're holding in China uh, and let me know. Please let me know in the comments. It, it'd be great to kind of figure out a, a couple more super investors that I can track in China. I know that Ray Dalio's Bridgewater um, is bullish on China. Uh, you can see in their recent 13Fs, they own Alibaba. Uh, they own a number of Chinese companies through, um, through ADRs, right? Um, but I'm wondering if they own any kind of directly through the Hong Kong exchange or like there's one more exchange uh, in China uh, where you can buy securities. So anyway, guys, it'd be fun to kind of bounce ideas off of each other with what gurus in China that you guys are following. And uh, I will post a link to this um, to this site where you guys can kind of dig around and see what you can turn up. Because, um, you know, obviously China has been a fantastic economy to invest in over the last 30 years. Um, and, you know, I imagine it will continue to be uh, in the foreseeable future. So this is uh, definitely a market I'm very interested in, um, you know, putting on some positions. So anyway, guys, that's all I've got. Again, I'll link to that, uh, this tool here in the description. Play with it. Let me know what you guys find. And a big shout out to my buddy in Canada for, for walking me through uh, this whole thing. So with that, I will leave you guys until the next video. Take care.